Hi there, so today I'm talking a little bit about putting water in the bell of the bass clarinet. Sounds great. There are four things you need to think about before you get started. One, if you're a composer writing this effect, you need to check with the player before you do this because they might have a super expensive bell that they don't want to put water into. Someone suggested the other day that maybe players could have like a second new music bell the way that string players might have a new music bow, but this is an incredibly expensive idea for an effect that doesn't actually come up that often. So I think for me to have a second bell, I had a look today and it would be about 140 pounds. The second thing is that, for example, on the buffet bass clarinet, there is a venting hole at the base of the instrument and this needs to be covered. I do this usually with a little bit of blue tack, as you can see here. The third thing is that you actually don't need that much water. Um, here I am pouring probably a little bit too much in, so it's going to spill out the bottom C key. I'm not entirely sure this is great for the pads of that bottom C key, so I would just, just put a little bit of water in. The fourth thing, and something that most composers don't realize, is that this is only going to really affect the low C on the bass clarinet. Or the low E flat, if you're writing for a bass clarinet that only goes to E flat. Uh, you can hear here that the C sharp is a little bit muted. As is the D. But after that, the instrument plays as normal. Which means you can have the water prepared in the instrument when the piece starts, as long as you're happy for every low C that you have there to have that water effect. So there are a few things to notice about how it sounds. So when I play the low C, we obviously get some nice like bubbling, um, but you will also hear loads of harmonics in the sound. <laughs> This is just this is just me playing a normal low C, so I'm not adding anything to get those harmonics to come out. That's just the result of the preparation. If I start to overblow a little bit to do kind of spectral multiphonics, I can emphasize some of those harmonics. And then the other thing I can do is I can do spectral glissandi, so then you'll hear the kind of gliss effect going through those different harmonics. Another effect I really like is actually just breathing in, you get a really nice kind of um, bubbling sound. And the last effect that I really like is to do kind of slap tongue on those low C's. So I'm doing two things here and this is more or less a very quick explanation of slap tongue. I'm doing a dry slap, so slap tongue is a kind of vacuum effect with the, with the articulation and it doesn't actually require any air. So when I do a dry slap tongue I'm not breathing into the instrument but you still get the pitch. Well you still get a pitch. Here we've got a pitch with a lot of splash. Um, and then I'm doing a wet slap tongue which means I'm adding air afterwards so that we get a little bit more tone. It's quite difficult with the water in the bell to to keep the tone going. There's something, I guess there's a kind of like literal splashback effect happening and it kind of, um, the water goes up and then down and it kind of um, puts a little bit of pressure. So, so yeah, it's a little bit tricky to just kind of force the air to keep going through after that slap tongue, but it does sound pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short video about putting water in the bell of the bass clarinet. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Oh, please do like and subscribe to the channel because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. Bye.